Currently, the world global demand for honey is on the rise. Its high value sets it as a unique product for Zambia to diversify into. In Zambia, honey represents a very small share of Zambia's total exports, roughly 0.08% as of 2012. Although Zambian honey is considered to be one of the best in the world because of its unique nutty and woody flavor, Zambia's honey processors face a number of challenges in tapping into these global markets to grow and significantly contribute to Zambia's export earnings. Uh, honey has got huge potential to create, uh, to contribute to wealth creation in Zambia and also to economic development. What we've been seeing over the last couple of years is that there is an upward trend worldwide in terms of consumption of honey. And Zambian honey has got a niche in that it's organic honey. It's not adulterated in any way with antibiotics or any other enzymes. So there is a growing appetite or a growing demand for Zambian honey in markets in Europe, in the United States. And slowly we are hearing of processors having inquiries and trying to enter markets in, middle, in the Middle East and in the Far East and Asian countries. You know, honey, it is. Uh... That's what others refer to as a, a liquid, liquid gold, which can be exploited on a sustainable basis. The key challenge most of the, uh, the honey processors exporters have been facing is to meet the, the certification, to meet those requirements which are required by the uh, developed countries. One first thing located I'll be looking at is uh, mostly it is, uh, the food safety part of it. In order for Zambia to capture a larger market share, processors must produce high-quality certified honey, which will pass stringent international food safety testing for it to be accepted in international markets. In order for this to happen, bee farmers must be made aware of these requirements right from the onset. Zambia has been exporting honey uh, for some time now. The challenges have been around ensuring that the honey that's exported is certified as safe. Now, at that point, we have uh, what we refer to as uh, sanitary and phytosanitary standards, which are basic rules uh, which have been set up by the World Trade Organization. Now, to facilitate trade, we need to streamline SPS within the honey value chain. Not just the honey value chain, but other agricultural value chains as well. We are starting with honey uh, and what we are learning now already is that there are a lot of weaknesses and gaps within the systems. So as we go forward, we need to develop systems which can withstand scientific scrutiny. My name is uh, Dan Ball and I'm the Managing Director of Forest Fruits Limited, which is a uh, bee products company here in Zambia. We produce and export uh, organic, certified organic bee products. We've uh, been in existence about 17 years here in Zambia. We started with about 100 beekeepers and five tons of honey, and today we have about 7,000 beekeepers, and we, this year, will produce 1,000 tons of honey, most of which will be exported to the European Union. The lack of training and lack of awareness in SPS can be very costly. And if there's a claim against you, it's, it's a financial claim. And your shipments in Europe or in another port in another country, and what recourse do you have uh, but to bear the costs associated with it? And that can range from, uh, that can range from having your shipment completely destroyed and you pay the costs, or shipping it back to you and you pay the costs, or discount it heavily. So, you know, it's extremely important. Beekeepers' awareness of sanitary and phytosanitary standards is imperative to ensure the quality of honey meets prescribed standards. Coordination among stakeholders must be improved as beekeepers on the ground have expressed a lack of sanitary and phytosanitary standards knowledge. government <laughs> Government 
Kwa hiyo kama tizizi zitabatu zitabatu funda po. Eh, watu funde kufia pia pale kwa ba tinshi munga ta mureshi sunga ku inofidia shira ku kashuti shafuma. Shafa wa mudubu saka. Eh, kuti mwa shisungira ko kula watu kula watu mbutu do yotu tienshi mu. Kula watu mbutu na moto ika na munshi mu ero nshi mutashi kwa efi ko kufukati fia pale efi. Ati noti kwa chiku fia marwele. Ah. Eh, kwa chiku fia marwele yao. We we spend a lot of time, a lot of face time with our producers because our producers are not well educated. Most uh, village beekeepers in, in remote areas have between, I suppose, between a grade three up to grade five level of education. So you have to spend an enormous amount of time explaining, training, and then reinforcing again. And uh, that takes a lot of resource. You know what, we, we, we have one company set up which supplies beehives and does contract training. So, so, and we have people that have been, have a lot of experience uh, in beekeeping and they have great communication skills. So, so wherever they go, they're able to sit down with people and talk at their level. We, we don't, there is no fancy language or anything. We just talk at where everybody can understand and we, everything is done in a practical way. Everything is shown practically, and, and we can often send people back to help at later stages. Training is incredibly important and is part and parcel, but you cannot, we cannot pay for training out of jars of honey. We cannot do that. It just doesn't work. In order to improve livelihoods of producers, processors, and traders of honey and bee products, the government and other organizations such as SNV through the Trade and Institutional Capacity Building Apiculture Sector Project, TICBAS, which is funded by the AFDB, have stepped in to provide support to expand trade and ensure that Zambia captures a larger percentage of the honey export market. In as far as we are trying to work with the, the government of Zambia in agriculture, our objective is uh, we first want to be able to for each country to be sufficient, to be able to feed its citizens. So adding to the food security. So here we have a project where we are produce, adding capacity to produce, uh, produce honey. Okay, so by producing honey, uh, processing it and so on, we are adding, we are contributing to food security. So that is, that is one, one item. But then uh, the second important point for us is some kind of diversification. We don't want Zambia or any other country on the continent to rely solely on one product. And in the case of Zambia, I think we usually talk of maize. So we would want to, you know, if we're exporting maize, if we're producing maize, let's also produce honey in sufficient quantities to feed our population. Not only to feed our population, but also to get some kind of income. At Comesa, I'm heading the program on sanitary and phytosanitary matters, which is a program related to food safety, plant and animal health. And uh, my area of specialization is food safety, quality management. I've been working on these issues in industry and from also from the policy and regulatory perspective in the East, in a number of countries in the East and Southern Africa for the last 20 years. The one thing I need to make clear is that whenever we are talking of non-tariff barriers, you need to understand that sanitary and phytosanitary barriers are legitimate measures, policy measures to protect plant health, protect animal health, and protect human health. And also to protect the production systems. Because if they are not there and goods just move anyhow, you can, you, you can actually compromise the status of another territory that doesn't have that disease. So there are legitimate policy measures. So what COMESA does in terms of these countries is to help the countries identify what are those legitimate and justified measures and also what are those illegitimate and, and illegitimate measures that are not justified but are obstructing trade. The government, through the Department of Veterinary Services, is also developing training materials to support its farm extension officers in ensuring that beekeepers are aware of food safety standards right from the onset of honey production. We've, um, we have several um, training materials that have been developed through several international organizations uh, like the African Union, 
the International Bureau for Animal Resources in, um, in Nairobi and they've had several workshops as well as within the region uh, but also within within um, Zambia we've worked closely with the, the um, several associations uh, that are working with, uh, with the farmers as well as the forestry department uh, to come up with um, uh, uh, education materials that we are um, uh, undertaking. Also there are um, uh, other initiatives which have been done with several organizations, uh, SNV being one of them, um, that are working closely with the, with the farmers to ensure that these uh, messages um, reach the farmers. Uh, we had been talking a lot with the private sector as well as our, our colleagues in the public sector and we realized there were certain gaps in the Hannibal chain regarding uh, phytosanitary and sanitary standards uh, integration and streamlining. A uh, classic or uh, a, refer a reference point really is that there was a time Zambia was trying to export honey into the South African market and the South African market being a recipient country had concerns about the prevalence of a disease called American fall breed in Zambia and judging and looking at our own history and the scientific documents we had we argued that that disease was not prevalent in Zambia and it, Zambia was free from it. Now because we did not have any scientific systems, it was very difficult to prove it. And it took a lot of effort from colleagues within the government and the private sector setting up various uh, studies to allay those fears within the South African uh, markets until last year when they finally agreed to the findings of those studies and allowed Zambian honey exports into that market. So that was a learning point for us and we decided that we don't want to go through system and problems like that every time there are concerns from uh, export markets. And to go around that problem, it was incumbent upon us to see how we can develop a system which we can all rely on. So whatever fears or whatever concerns that the export markets have, uh, we could then rely on that system which can withstand any level of scientific scrutiny. So TICBAS came about because of that. And to do that, TICBAS, we're really looking at three main components. A, we're trying to improve SPS integration and awareness among the value chain players, in this case the producers, the processors, the traders, and of course the consumers. The second big component is improving the capacities of the ministries, uh, relevant departments and the agencies so that they can then implement the SPS measures because SPS world over is the mandate of the government and not the private sector. So we need to improve the capacities of the government organizations, the ministries, the departments and the agencies. And lastly, we are promoting consumer awareness because it all starts from there. You know, it's extremely important that uh, that we get this right and that, that we comply with international regulations and that we not just comply, but we understand and we train back down the line so that these risks are minimized. As efforts are made to continue to diversify and grow Zambia's rural economy, food safety awareness and capacity building activities among players in the honey value chain have begun to ensure that Zambia meets international food safety standards in order to capture a huge opportunity in the honey export markets.